Hello again and welcome back to Garage Science. This is going to be another video on uh, upgrading the mill or modifying it to uh, improve the performance a little bit. So uh, got it slightly disassembled already. I uh, took the um, x-axis limit switch uh, cover off. So there's two two Allen head screws there that you take off um, and then there's two Allen hood screw two Allen head screws that you take off to uh, remove the limit switch. So you see that here. Um, so basically what this uh, upgrade is going to do is it's going to be a cover for the bellows um, to keep chips from piling up on here. Because what tends to happen is um, uh, if you're milling a lot all at once, the, the chips will build up on the bellows and eventually they will prevent the bellows from, uh, from compressing properly. And if it, if it compresses badly enough, then it can actually lift up on the ends and then your bellows is actually off the track. And so, um, I don't know if it's just the size of the bellows, or maybe just the, generally the size of the mill um, kind of makes it hard to, to keep the bellows on the track, but that's basically what happens. The coolant doesn't really wash all the chips out, so it, it just builds up over time. Um, and with the tool holding forks that I've been uh, machining, uh, really pretty much after each operation, uh, you've got to clean the bellows off, so that kind of slows, slows you down. So we're going to put a cover on here. And so it's going to be a, a rubber cover. So this is a piece of rubber. It's actually two pieces of rubber that I stitched together. So um, uh, this is uh, 12 inches by 14 inches currently. I'll probably trim an inch or two off the end by the time it's over. But the idea is going to be to, uh, to mount this such that it covers the bellows like so. And then it'll mount to the end here off of these screws. I'll put a bracket there. And so it'll mount there. And so what should happen is as the uh, axis moves back and forth, is this should roll back and forth, right? Uh, providing the, the freedom of motion, right? But because uh, it's a smooth surface, right? As the chips pile up on here and the coolant washes them uh, down and across, it should just flow off, the, off to the side. It shouldn't be able to build up, build up on the bellows covers at all. And then to also help with the chip, uh, accumulation on the lay cover. Um, I'm going to mount this to the x-axis uh, limit switch cover and so this will end up mounting to the side and what this is going to be is just like a chip ramp so as if the chips come off the table this direction um, you know some of them will still fall on the bellows covers but the bulk of them should just kind of roll off the edge and when they do that they'll go into a ramp that, that jettisons them off to the side and out of the way. So. Uh, by doing that, I shouldn't have to clean uh, the bellows cover, at least on this side, um, as often. And um, I don't, I don't seem to need to clean the bellows on the back side of the uh, y-axis uh, gantry um, quite as quite as much. So um, we'll see how that goes. It's also more cramped back there, so doing a modification like this on the other side is, is a lot harder. So the way we're going to mount this, though, I kind of already described mounting it on the front. There, the two two bolts that hold the bellows uh, for the weight cover on that we'll, we'll utilize to, to mount the rubber. And then for the limit switch side, you don't want to mount it to the table because the table slides back and forth and so it'll try and drag the rubber around with it. Um, that's bad. And so what we're going to do is we're going to mount it to the bottom here where the limit switch is actuated and we're going to do that with these uh, sheet metal um, angled brackets. And so these will slide up underneath the nut for the conduits on either side, right? And so, and then the the rubber will get um, will get screwed to these. And so, there's some 3D printed uh, clamps, basically that'll that'll sit down on top. So the rubber will sit over this, and it'll get clamped down onto the bracket from the uh, the 3D printed uh, clamp um, above it. And so that'll hold it in place, and that'll hold it basically to the limit switch, um, which doesn't move back and forth. And so um, by doing it that way, the rubber will stay stationary. Um, the table will still be able to slide back and forth, and, and then that chip ramp will uh, move along with the table as well. So it should turn out pretty good. Um, I'm probably about halfway done already. Uh, just uh, kind of skipped some of the labor-intensive stuff, particularly with these things. Um, probably just want to get the right size rubber to begin with. This is just scrap that I had laying around. 
Um, but we'll see how it goes. So stick around. So we're getting pretty close to the final assembly of this modification. So um, what we've done is we've mounted the rubber to the x-axis limit switch bracket and so those um, those brackets that I showed you before are attached with the nuts for the conduits so we're dual purposing that so we don't have to drill holes or anything like that um, and then there's a little flat plate on either side that basically clamps the rubber to that um, sheet metal bracket so um, what I've also done is I've used a 12 gauge uh, copper wire to sort of lift up the center portion and so that should create a convex uh, surface here on the rubber um, so everything kind of flows to the side um, because as I put this together what I noticed is there is a kind of a, a shape that tended to want to flow everything towards the back center area and we don't want the chips to build up in this area um, and so that this wire hanging here will kind of just keep keep the rubber up a little bit um, and it's all flexible so it can move around uh, so it shouldn't cause any issues. The other thing I've done is add this bracket down here and so what the uh, rubber is going to do is it's going to sit on there like this and then there's another uh, 3D printed plate we're going to use to clamp the rubber on there. Um, and so we'll do that momentarily. But the reason why it's uh, mounted like this is so that way um, you want the the direction of the curl for the rubber as it, as the y axis moves towards the front. Um, you want the rubber to curl basically front and uh, towards the front and down. You don't want it to like curl up um, and then potentially either cause chips to wash back towards the table or um, you know not not drift off the side. So you want it to basically roll flat forward um, and then maybe even down a little bit. So by having it basically curl forward like this, uh, we should we should get that kind of a shape um, when it moves. Um, it's also a relatively thick rubber. It's, uh, it's a little heavy even, um, so I think the weight of it alone will help it uh, curl in the right direction. Um, the other thing we've done is we took the uh, cover for the x-axis um, uh, limit switch, and so we'll remount this here in a minute. But um, what I've done is I've attached a uh, channel of uh, aluminum here, and it's, uh, it's at an angle, so that way as the chips roll off the front of the table, they'll fall into the channel and then just run off the side. So everything should basically eject off the side here. So most of what hits the top of this rubber should just be, um, shouldn't be chips directly off the table. Um, it should just be whatever's flying around um, along with whatever coolant's flying around. So most of the chips should roll off via that channel. The rubber's just there to um, sort of take care of the last little bit. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll finish getting this assembled. See how it goes. So something I wasn't thinking about was these two screws on the end are encroaching on the two mounting screws. So I'm just going to take those out. We're not going to use them. There's more than enough other screws to hold all this rubber in place. So we'll take those out. So we're getting pretty close to being done with this modification. So yesterday I printed this part. So what this is uh, gonna do is this is gonna go underneath the uh, Y-axis bellows on the um, near side. And uh, basically, if you pull this off, you'll see that the bottom of the way covers has kind of a triangle shape, right? And what that does is it slides into the, the wedge for the ways, so that way it, it slides back and forth with the ways, right? But when it comes to the end, it hits this uh, it's like extension post, right? And that's what the weight cover screws to. So as it 
collapses and compresses, all this weight cover that's out here is not being guided by anything. It's just kind of floating in air, right? And that's why you can, you can move it up like that, right? And so what happens is, is as the chips build up in the bellows and it compresses or it fails to compress, if it, if it bunches up like that and then it the table moves in the positive Y, then it can't it can't make it into the um, in, into alignment with the ways, and then the whole bellows cover basically goes all wonky. Um, so besides being bad for the bellows cover, um, it does uh, allow eventually for chips to to get underneath um, into where the ways are. And so what this is is it's basically an extension of the way, so that way. Um, uh, so that way, <laughs> the bellows cover has something to guide on. Um, and so uh, I didn't make it solid. I made it with this kind of X shape in the center just so that way it can um, um, flex a little bit. It's kind of a tight fit. I, I didn't want it to rattle around um, on here as I was milling. It does have some thin walls on the top. So as I installed it yesterday, I did uh, crack the top of it. But it fits pretty snugly on there. There we go. And so then the ways fit on there like so. All right, so now, now you can't, there's a little spot there where the uh, the split happens, but it's a pretty small area. So that's, that's about the only place where you could maybe have the same sort of alignment issue, but I chamfered the edges of this plastic um, guide. So that way, even if it bunches up a little bit, as it slides, it will realign itself um, through the, the chamfered edges. Um, so anyway, so that's gonna be the last part of this. Um, and we're gonna reassemble the, the rest of it and should be ready to, to test it out. Alright, so that's the extent of this modification. Gonna get the X axis cover back on here. Uh, but we'll, uh, we'll see how this goes. Um, so there's a little resistance. The, um, the X axis cover contacts the rubber just a little bit. Um, I can feel this back edge and it's, uh, it's not crazy sharp, but it is a little sharp. So I think I'm gonna pull this back out real quick and uh, we're gonna just file that edge down so it's not, a, not so sharp. All right, that should be it for this modification. Um, so the uh, the little bit of rubber that uh, I mentioned before had the wire under it to kind of prop it up, it's underneath the, the ramp here, so there really shouldn't be anything other than maybe coolant splashing in under there. What should happen is any coolant that rolls over the edge here with chips in it will uh, first fall into the ramp, which will redirect it off to the side um, and get it out of the way. Anything that falls onto the rubber will drape off the edge, uh, roll off the edge, um, and it's, it's, a, it's a relatively smooth surface. So, um, shouldn't roll back at all. And, and so, then the rubber, it won't, it won't bunch up and curl up like this because of the way it's mounted at the end. It'll just kind of drape over the edge. And then, as it moves the other direction, uh, it just kind of flattens out. So even even like this, um, the the coolant should still be able to, to basically roll off the edge pretty easily. So yeah, not a bad little deal. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and machine this block. It's uh, all set up, and we're about to do the first operation for the tool holding fork that you've seen me do a couple videos on. 
Um, this this uh, operation produces pretty good amount of chips in a relatively short amount of time and so it should be a pretty good check on this new modification. So here we go.
All right, that's it. Go ahead and open her up. All right, so I uh, took that block down to uh, the end of the first operation. Um, usually, at this point, um, anytime that I've run this in the past, the bellows covers are just packed with chips. And, uh, um, and then when I move the y-axis uh, back, that uh, all those bellows start popping out of the way uh, guide. And so it's uh, not doing that anymore. So they, uh, they're all still snugly in there. You can feel them down there. Get, a, uh, get another angle for you. So as you can see, bellows covers completely chip free. They all are still in line, right? And so that'll help chips from building up under here as well and working their way into the ways over time. Um, and it'll help keep the mill running for longer periods of time when I'm using it. So yeah, that was at least uh, about a one minute process <clears throat> after uh, running one of these parts after every single first operation where I'd have to clean these bellows out. So the first operation is only eight minutes long to begin with. Um, so spending a minute afterwards cleaning chips out is a pretty big impact to the cycle time. So this is gonna help a lot. All right, so you can see that the chips, um, there's a little bit sticking here, but not nearly what I had before. Um, there are some chips under here, which is uh, causing me to think that there is still some coolant causing the chips to flow backwards on the uh, ways, onto the way covers, but so there may still be a need uh, eventually to clean that out, but also any coolant that flows through there should hopefully uh, just clean those chips out uh, naturally. But uh, it's, it's significantly better than it was before. Um, but yeah, if I was doing this again, I'd probably uh, get a um, piece of rubber that's specifically for this. Um, we'll see how this rubber holds up over time. I think it's supposed to be somewhat uh, chemically resistant. It hasn't reacted to the coolant at all yet. Um, but getting one that's properly sized so you don't have to do this um, um, blending right, of, of two different pieces of rubber together, right? getting a single piece would be pretty helpful. Um, but really, um, it'd be kind of nice if Tormach made a, a modification like this for their, for their mills um, just because they already have bellows covers for the 770 and the 1100 models, um, but nothing for the 440. So some of us with the 440s are fairly industrious and would like to keep the spindles turning as much as possible. So if, you, if uh, Tormach could uh, make a modification like this, that would probably help uh, some of us continue in our productivity. But anyways, this is where we're at for now, and I think it's, it's pretty good. So um, anyways, yeah, that's pretty much it for this uh, video. So go ahead and remember to uh, like and subscribe and comment and all the rest. Um, check out the other videos on the other modifications I've done to this. CNC mill, um, like I said, I think uh, I, I think it's a pretty good mill for its size, and uh, you can be pretty productive with it. But till next time.